first thing you want to do is gather up your uh, M3 square nuts and insert one square nut into each of the rectangular holes on the pieces shown. You want to start them either by hand or with a needle nose pliers and then press them all the way down into the hole as far as you can with some tool that fits easily into the hole. Note that the square nuts are designed to go deep into the holes. You should be able to examine through the screw hole and note that the threads of the M3 square nut are lined up with the hole. And um, if not, keep pushing them in there. The next step is to install the leg pieces and other clamps into the base. This piece goes here, pretty much the only place it can go. Uh, just remember to make sure that this little kind of hook is lined up with the center of the base rather than this way around. Make sure it's this way around. Same with this one over here. goes in there. Make sure the hook is on this side. These pieces go into these slots. The important thing with these is to make sure that the, the hooks are on uh, that side of the base. Again, kind of lined up with the center. And that the hex-shaped holes, or half hex in this case, uh, are pointing outwards. Right, so the bolt is going to go through there and a nut is on this side. So make sure you have them in this orientation, in this position. If you get it mixed up, you can always take it apart later. Now these pieces are a snug fit and may require some force to push, push in and push together. If they don't go in without too much force, like you shouldn't have, be having to hammer on them to get them in there. Uh, then you're good. If you if you just can't push them in there by hand, then you may need to trim the edges of either the piece that's going in or the hole itself, because a lot oftentimes there might be elephant's foot or over extrusion on these edges, preventing it from going all the way in. Once you've got those four pieces installed, there should be uh, no visible gap between the bottom of the pieces and the top of the base, um, and the uh, square holes for the nuts should basically disappear right below the plastic of the base, the top of the base. To secure them, you want to use M3 by 10 socket head cap screws in these five holes. So for these legs, you're using M3 by 10s. And then for these four holes, you're using M3 by 6. Uh, again, M3 by 6 for these four, and M3 by 10 for these five. And you can drive them in hand tight because the square nuts will secure it and not be stripped. Next up, and you don't necessarily have to do this before other steps, but I'll go ahead and show you how to put this part together. This is the sanding spindle, and you need to get your four and a half inch quarter twenty full threaded bolt and the uh, spindle pulley or sanding drum, the big pulley, uh, R one eighty eight bearing large spacer, the sanding drum with no hex detent on it, quarter twenty uh, uh, nut, the small uh, um, barrel pulley, as I call it, should have the uh, hex detent on one end, another quarter twenty nut, the other sanding drum uh, sleeve holder with the, with the hex detent on it, another large spacer, the other R188 bearing, a small spacer, and the acorn nut, or cap nut, however you want to call it. Now I do find that it's easier to install the sanding sleeves onto the drums before I assemble it, but you can uh, get it over the whole assembly and, and put those on later, or replace them without disassembling the whole thing. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So. These should be a snug fit. If you find that the sleeves, the sanding sleeves, just slide right over the drums, then you'll want to use some kind of uh, glue, like um, E6000 or uh, Gorilla Glue or something that will hold them together, or reprint the drums with a with a little bit of over extrusion maybe, or scale it up by 0.1% or something like that to make it a little bit bigger. Um, but they were designed to be a uh, a press fit. Uh, so it, it goes on by hand, uh, but should not just slide right off. So now we go ahead and put it together. So go ahead and take your quarter twenty by four and a half inch bolt and your big pulley, 
and slide it on. If it doesn't just slide on, then you can just work it down by turning it until you get to the end and then force it in. Uh, next up is your R180A bearing. These are basically bearings with quarter inch inside diameter, half inch outside diameter, and I believe three eighths inch thickness. R188 is what you want to be using here. Uh, after the bearing, we use the thick spacer. Um, this might slip on or it might screw on. Looks like I need to screw mine on, so I won't make you watch that. If you do have to screw it on, usually it'll thread itself as you go. So once you get it going, it turns a lot easier. Once you get the spacer pushed down or threaded down to the bearing, go ahead and give it a twist to make sure it's nice and snug up against the bearing. This assembly assumes a small amount of compression in order to fit properly on the machine. Next up is your uh, sanding barrel with no hex detents on it. So this one, it doesn't really matter which way you put it on. And again, it'll either slide on nicely or require you to do a little bit of turning to get it on. Looks like this one is kind of in between. So I'll go ahead and work it down. Just as with the spacer, if you're, if you're screwing it on, go ahead and give it a turn, make sure it's nice and snug up against the spacer. Next up is the small barrel pulley. Uh, actually, next up is the hex nut and then the small barrel pulley. But I do these at the same time because if the barrel pulley doesn't slide on the shaft, on the, on the bolt uh, easily, then you won't be able to screw the nut all the way on and then slide the pulley over it. So what I usually do is go ahead and start the nut until it's just a little bit of the bolt sticks out and then put the bolt the pulley on over the nut and then turn them both at the same time once you get it all the way down there go ahead and do it up hand tight don't put a whole lot of energy into it but you do want to get it pretty snug next up is the same thing but with the other sanding drum so start the nut so just a little bit of the bolt sticks out then get the drum on there and thread it on again hand tight don't go don't go ham on it but get it snug next up is another thick spacer same as before if it pushes on push it on otherwise thread it on and get it on there and it looks like We'll be good. We might have to get this a little bit more compressed. If so, then basically you want to tighten each piece down sequentially until you get it nice and snug. And then next up is a bearing. And then the thin spacer so that, so that we don't have the nut um, trapping the bearing from moving. So a thin spacer so that the nut only presses on the inner race of the bearing. And then your acorn nut. Again, and tight. Next up, test fitting. I say test fitting because we basically want the two ball bearings just to rest nicely into the center of both of those legs. If it's off by a millimeter one way or the other, uh, then you need to adjust the sanding spindle until it just drops in or sets in place. So it looks like we've got some compressing to do. I've got about two millimeters uh, too much. Um, one option to make this easier is to um, take a little bit off of each spacer. Um, but what I like to do is go ahead and crank them down. Um, if you can, use a, a, a wrench on the nut. Don't turn uh, the, the plastic itself because you might end up stripping the hexagonal detent in the drum. So we're basically going to try to work everything further that way to get these two bearings to meet up. Uh, to be slightly closer together so that they match the um, the base legs. Now you could just force the legs apart a little bit and get it in there, but that's that's too much. We don't want we don't want to deform the base that much. We want it to be able to just drop in there. So first, I use some needle nose pliers to get a good grip on those uh, hex nuts. If you have one of those cheap and cheesy flat uh, hex wrenches that, they, that you get in furniture assembly kits that might work but i didn't have one of those at hand so i used some needle nose pliers to screw that nut down on that moved this uh, barrel pulley closer that way and then i did the same thing with that nut 
which moved this uh, sanding drum that way, but it wasn't quite enough. So what I went ahead and did is just took uh, took the acorn nut and the small spacer and bearing off, and then took the the thick bearing off, <clears throat> and I basically just kind of tore off a, f a few of the layers because it's printed like this, so the layers are uh, that way, flat. <laughs> Uh, so it's easy to peel off some layers or just kind of uh, cut them off with a tool. Um, so I basically just took off a few layers, and the layers are 0.2 millimeters each. So if you wanted to get real exact, you could actually figure out the offset and know exactly how many layers to remove. But I just took off a few. So now I'm going to go ahead and put it back together. And this one needed to be threaded on. And that will probably be just enough removal to fit this right into the base as necessary. Let's find out. Yep, that's pretty much right on the money. Go ahead and crank that acorn nut down a little bit more so it's perfect, and then we'll move on. Now when you're test fitting this, you want to make sure that this spins freely, and you might even want to go ahead and grab the clips and snap those on. They snap over the bearing, so they actually snap on, and then you screw them down. And then make sure it still spins. So now, uh, one of the things that can happen is that this nut can rub on this beveled edge. So what I found for this one is that I needed to use two spacers at the very end, two thin spacers at the very end before the acorn nut. All right, with the sanding spindle fitting in there nicely, next step is to go ahead and assemble the axle bracket assembly. Let's go ahead and prep and install the main drive motor. Uh, if you haven't already, be sure to insert a square nut into the main pulley, drive pulley. And again, make sure that the threads of the nut line up with the hole on the side of the pulley. It's hard to get on camera, but you should be able to see it uh, clearly in person. We also need two M3 by 6 millimeter socket head cap screws to secure the motor to the bracket. And the first step is to put the pulley onto the motor. Now this hole might be slightly undersized, so you can either um, drill it out or ream it out or um, just go ahead and force it on. Be careful because the, the drive shaft of the motor uh, might get pushed out, so you'll want to have that on a hard surface while you're pushing the pulley on. Uh, but go ahead and push push it on as far as you can. Um, the, the hole in the pulley is set at a depth such that it won't go past where it needs to go. It'll pretty much go right about there, just a little bit away from the motor itself so it's not rubbing on the motor. If it does happen to rub on the motor, then you'll want to carefully um, pull the pulley just away from the motor you know, so it doesn't rub on the actual motor housing. I'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll get it installed on the base. Once we get that on there, as you can see, it's pretty close, um, but it's just barely a hairs away from the motor um, housing. Uh, but once we get it on there, we want to use our M3 uh, set screw straight into there and get that secured on there. Now on this, you can go fairly snug because of that uh, square nut. Um, don't go ham on it, but uh, there's no plastic thread to strip out on this, so you should be able to get that pretty snug on there. And make sure it's turning freely, and then go ahead and put it on the base. To put it on the base, you want to make sure you're lining up the two screw holes, not those detents. I'm not sure what those are for, but they're not of any use in this situation. Those are your screw mounting holes. They're M3 threaded. So you basically put the pulley through the hole, Line up those threaded holes, and then use your M3 by 6 millimeter uh, socket head cap screws through those two holes to secure the motor in place. I'll go ahead and get that done. Uh, now, an M3 by 6 millimeter screws have just enough bite, just enough length beyond the printed part to bite into and hold the motor securely. But if you're having problems due to your print or you know out of spec screws or something like that then you can use an M3x8 or even an M3x10 to secure the motor. Um, I've done some experimenting, and M3x10 is not too long 
and does not interfere with the motor rotation. Um, but I would err towards caution and stick with M3x6 if you can, or M3x8. Uh, but that's nice and secure, so let's move on. All right, let's get our axle bracket prepped. We're going to need a lock nut that's going to go into the indicator knob. We need two of the two-inch fully threaded um, quarter 20 bolts. Uh, one left bracket and one right bracket, or left and right, I forget which. They're mirror images. Uh, the indicator uh, piece, the um, quarter inch interior di di diameter, I think it's 3 eighths exterior, and half inch long steel spacer, um, a, a plain hex nut, <clears throat> two more R188 bearings, uh, this center piece, it's just kind of a stiffener, um, the, the base piece for the uh, set screw or the the height screw the indicator knob uh, the large barrel pulley with the large openings at each end um, a little stiffener optional I'll show you how to use that later um, six m3 by 10 uh, millimeter socket head cap screws and two of these m3 by 8 um, flathead screws and of course the printed parts as shown all right, so quick and easy thing to do is go ahead and put one of your bolts, uh, two inch bolts into this bracket so that the head gets wedged there. And you might have to ream out the hole or screw it down or press it through or whatever, but the end result will be like this. And then you take this plate with the countersunk holes facing out, and then you use the uh, flathead screws to clamp that together. And that's just to make sure the bolt doesn't loosen up over time and, and work its way out of that. And it should look like that when you're done. Uh, you can go uh, somewhere between finger tight and hand tight on this. Just remember that this is threading into plastic, so you don't have to go super tight. Um, and probably not a big deal, but make sure the rounded edge of the plate lines up with the rounded edge of the, of the other part. And then set that aside to be installed into the base later. Next, we'll go ahead and impress, uh, press fit the R188, R188 bearings into both ends of the uh, barrel pulley. And uh, these are a press fit, and sometimes they don't like to go in straight. So one of the tricks is to use the other bolt through all three pieces, and they will kind of align themselves as you tighten the nut. We're going to take this apart when we're done. Basically, we're just going to use this either with hands or tools to get those bearings pressed in there. Barrel pulley should look like this when you get the bearings installed. Uh, flush is just fine. Uh, since I used the nut and bolt, they got pressed in all the way. So either way is fine. It doesn't have to be uh, recessed. Just make sure that it's either flush or recessed. Either way is fine. Now let's go ahead and get our indicator knob and uh, lock nut and make sure that the nylock is facing up towards the top of the knob. Uh, line it up and press it in there. Might need a little gentle persuasion, but it should fit snugly. There we go. Now it's not going to be totally flush with the, with the bottom of the knob as designed, but it should barely be poking out. So that one looks pretty good. Next is to insert the spacer into the bottom of the indicator piece. So another press fit. So basically just line it up in that hole and press it in as far as you can. It should go pretty much all the way in, uh, but if it protrudes a little bit, don't worry about it. Um, this, this end of the hole is smaller, so you won't be able to push it through. So that's why you gotta go in on this side and push it up as far as you can. And it should basically go all the way in. Uh, looks like I'm going to need to use a tool for this one, so I'll take care of that and show you what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I did with the um, bearings into the barrel pulley. And just use that extra bolt and get that screwed in there that way. We'll go ahead and start the process of assembling the bracket. Uh, you can do this with either side, but you want to do just one side first. And make sure that the flat sides with all the little 
detents is facing inward. I usually just go ahead and start with the left side or right side, depending on your perspective. Um, this piece needs to have that uh, taper pointing down. That goes right there. We're going to use an M10, M3 by 10 uh, from the outside in. And then this piece um, is symmetrical, so it can be uh, with the holes up or down or which way or that way. It doesn't really matter. I usually have the, the uh, nut holes facing down. And then we use another M3 by 10 screw that way. Uh, the indicator knob, uh, the knob indicator part uh, just rests in there freely. So we can't really put it in until we're ready to put the other side on. So I'm going to go ahead and screw those parts in. And next step is getting it all together in one piece. I forgot to mention this piece. Um, this is a, a stiffener for uh, the upper area. It's optional and can be installed later. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get it started uh, and we'll install it right away. Um, but like I said, you can leave that off until you feel it's necessary. Also note that since this piece has nuts in it, you can, you can screw it in hand tight. This piece does not have nuts. You're threading straight into plastic. Um, it's just there to help hold things together and give you somewhere to press when you're using the spring mechanism. Uh, so just go finger tight, you know, not hand tight. Otherwise you'll strip the plastic. Not a big deal. If you do strip the plastic, just get some glue in there and and let it set. Okay, so we got the indicator piece with the uh, spacer in the in the hole, and so I also went ahead and put together half of the axle bracket, and I went ahead and put that stiffener up there as well. And I forgot to mention you'll want to have two of the um, silicone bands ready to go for this as well. Uh, because you need to get them on there before you put it all together. So one of them just goes around the barrel pulley. And the other one needs to go around the barrel pulley and the spacer. Or if you don't include the spacer, just put them both around the barrel pulley. Then the indicator needs to go in this spot. And it just is held in place by the little cone shapes on either side. Um, and so I got this piece started with the screws. And so basically I'm going to put this together and then screw it tight. Um, also, if your uh, quarter 20 doesn't slip through those holes in the corner um, easily without too much pressure, then you'll probably want to open up that hole a little bit with a quarter inch drill bit or a reamer or even just sand it with a file. Um, you don't want it to be so tight that it's hard to put together, basically. Um, so I'll go ahead and get that mostly together, and then we'll put the indicator in there, and then push it all the way down. And then we will screw all those screws in. This should be able to pivot freely. Um, it doesn't need to be loose. In fact, a little bit a little bit stiff is okay. Um, and then we'll get that installed on the base plate. So I'm going to go ahead and screw these screws in, and then we'll go to the next step. All right, time to start putting things into the base, putting more things into the base. I usually start with uh, putting the uh, height screw bracket, whatever you want to call it, uh, into the base first, and then I put this on. Um, but if you want, you can actually um, put this in there uh, with the spring on, and then try to do them both at the same time. But I find it easier to go ahead and do this piece first, and then get that piece on there. Uh, we're going to hold this piece in with these two uh, little clamps with the uh, half circle cut out of them. Obviously, the, the circle is to help hold down the little circle part of the bolt holder. And we just go ahead and stick those in there. And we're going to screw them down with two each using M3x10 millimeter socket head cap screws straight through and into the plastic. Um, it just needs to be secure enough to keep this from coming out, um, but it should still rotate, uh, you know, with a small amount of force. You shouldn't have to really push hard on it, but it shouldn't be flopping around either. So I'm going to go ahead and get those screws in there, and then we'll go to the next step. All right, now we got the uh, bolt holder there in the bottom and secured. Since these are being screwed in just to plastic with no 
uh, square nuts just go you know light hand tight or heavy finger tight or whatever uh, enough to secure those those little clamps down uh, but you know this should still be able to be moved easily by one finger uh, we'll go ahead and put the spring on there you can put it upside down or right side up it doesn't really matter whichever you prefer uh, just so that we don't forget for the next step and I'm going to just move that out of the way for now because what we want to do is test fit the bolt and the and the nut into this bracket the, basically they need to be just wide enough apart for both the head and the and the nut to be resting in their little uh, hexagonal holes so go ahead and just you know put the nut on almost at the end and fit it in there and does it fit or not looks like I need to move it out a little bit so I'll turn it a few and just a little bit more oh, no that one needs to go a lot more if you can push it through that helps to put it in one side and then get that on center and then get that nut out there looks like this bolt is a little shorter than they usually are, but this just needs to be held in place. There we go. So that looks pretty good. Oh, not, not fully set down. Make sure the flat side is up and down. And that feels pretty good. I'll go ahead and do one. Six rotation and then force it in. Okay, so that's a good separation. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and use our little clamps to hold that in. And if you can get this in there, you can put it together like that. But you're probably going to have to go ahead and take that out of the bracket to get that on there far enough down that you can get those in there again. And then again, we're going to clamp those in with the two little plastic clamps. So these are the little clamps we're gonna be using to hold the uh, axle bracket into the base. And just note which side the hex shaped hole is on and make sure you're putting that either on the bolt or the nut. And then we're gonna use M3 by six millimeter socket head cap screws to secure them down to the base. So this one doesn't go there because the hex is on the wrong side so we're going to put that one over there and then this one goes here we basically put this little notch over that little uh, edge and basically just push it down line it up with the other part and then we're going to put a m3 by six through there and we'll magically make that screw itself down and i'll do the other side too so these just need to be clamped down uh, snug. There is a um, square nut in there, so you can go super tight if you really want to, but it just needs to hold this down. So both sides, I just have them in there, finger tight, no big deal. That's where it needs to be. And pretty much the only time you need to take this apart uh, is if you break a band, or if you, if you think you're going to break a band soon, uh, then you'd um, take that apart, take the knob off, then this whole assembly will come out. And then you'll partially disassemble. All you really have to just take out is the barrel pulley and this stiffener. And then you can put new bands on. Next step is to go ahead and put on the indicator. And we'll just do that now. We've already pushed our uh, nylock nut into the indicator uh, knob. And then we'll go ahead and put that, push this down and get that started. And then, of course, it's a lock nut, so it's going to take some effort to get it going. Um, it'll wear itself in as you use the machine. Next step is putting the spindle on. Um, for the spindle bracket, we're going to use these slightly bigger clamps. And we're going to use M3 by 10 socket head cap screws to hold those on after we get the spindle on. But before I do that, I wanted to show you these screw holes down here. If you need to change the uh, parallelism of the spindle 
to the axle bracket. Basically, you'll uh, insert an M3 by 6 cap screw into whichever side is lower in order to raise that up. So you basically drive an M3 by 6 screw into whichever side of the spindle needs to be raised up a little bit, and then unscrew it just enough to raise that side of the spindle the amount that it needs to be raised, and then put your clamp back on. And that's why we're using 10 millimeter screws to hold the clamp on. These clamps don't need to be super tight. We're just holding those bearings in place so that the spindle doesn't move up and down. Okay, now we got a tricky part. Basically what we need to do is stretch out the band that only goes around the barrel pulley. The one that goes around the stiffener, that's for the car axle bracket. So I have it just kind of hooked around the uh, bushing holder so that I don't choose the wrong one. But basically we need to stretch this pulley out and then put the spindle through it and then put the spindle in place. So what I found is kind of go vertical, get the get the um, pulley hooked over the first sanding barrel, and then hold it with your thumb there and just kind of stretch it out and turn it. And then don't worry if it's not on the barrel pulley right there. Go ahead and get the spindle in place where you want it to be uh, and clamp it down. So we put these clamps in. I already got my screws in there ready to screw down. So basically just put it in there, snap it over the bushing, Come on. There we go. Same on this side. And then screw those down. They don't need to be super tight, just in order to keep the spindle from moving. But there are um, square nuts that they're biting into. So you can go pretty tight if you really feel the need to. But just remember, you're stressing this joint over here and the plastic, so don't go, don't go ham on it. Now we'll go ahead and use a tool to pull that out a little bit and get it over the pulley. There we go. And you should be able to position these easily by rolling them side to side. And same through the bottom. So if you need to move that over or get it on the other barrel pulley, just use your finger to move it over. And then we'll get that axle on there and do some truing. So first thing I'm going to do is push this all the way down and get that knob all the way down so that the axle starts fully away from the sanding plate. One thing you'll want to do before you start putting the machine to use is make sure that spindle turns fairly freely. Ideally, you should be able to, uh, before you put the rubber band on, you should be able to just kind of get it spinning. Now this one's a little stiff. I think I got too much compression on the bearings, so I'll probably go ahead and take this apart and uh, adjust the spacers so that I get the bearings in the right place without too much compression. Um, so that they're not trying to push or pull the legs in or out um, and not pushing or pulling on the center of the bearings so that ideally this basically will spin freely by itself um, so that we have as little as possible drag on the, the drive motor. Uh, but once you get all that done, you can go ahead and take another one of your air, uh, bands Give it a stretch, make it a little bit easier to get it over the, the pulleys, and put it over the big pulley first. See, it's almost it's almost the perfect size for that pulley, um, but then just stretch it over the main drive pulley, get it in the notch, and should be good to go. Now, when, it's, when this is connected, this will be harder to turn because it's connected to the motor, which itself is hard to turn. Um, but when there's no bands on the spindle, on, on the sanding spindle, it should be able to spin relatively freely, at least with not uh, too much effort. Um, then we'll go ahead and put our car axle on. For that we'll put on the uh, debris shield. Now this is optional. Um, the, the exhaust of the motor is coming out these holes, so debris is not likely to go in them during use. But this has been designed to shield the motor from flying debris. And you're going to use two M3 by 10 socket head cap screws through those two holes there into those two holes there to hold that debris shield in place. I'll go ahead and do that now. Before we can put our axle on, we need to go ahead and set up one of the split pulleys. So get a M3 set screw, should be included if you get a kit. And then gently drive it in. Now these split pulleys are printed solid, so they should be able to to hold the thread. However, 
you need to only go finger tight um, or you'll strip the uh, plastic and have a useless pulley. That's why my kits include extra. But once you see it, once you start to see the set screw creeping into the slot, there it is, back it off and then make sure your bushings are separated. Put the pulley onto the axle and then finger tight that set screw. Just finger tight. And then we go ahead and put it on the machine. It's a lot like getting the sanding spindle in there. Just pull your uh, band out, hook it around one of the wheels, and then go ahead and stretch it out and get your <laughs> get the band off of the bushing if that happens. <laughs> it likes to be on the bushing. There we go. Okay. So now the band is off the bushing. We'll go ahead and get our bushings into the bracket. Now these brackets are designed for standard 132nd scale um, bushings to snap in place, just like they do in most of the 132nd scale cars. Uh, so if that's the kind of axle you're chewing, go ahead and pop those in. And then stretch the band over the split pulley. And if necessary, see how the, the pulley is pulling the axle a little bit more to one side. We want it to kind of be more in the center. So we're going to go ahead and roll that band towards the center. And it's going to want to center there. Um, and then we basically go ahead and hook it up to power uh, using low voltage to get things moving. This, this, the motor turns the big pulley on the spindle. That pulley then turns this pulley, the idler pulley, I guess we could call it, which in turns, in turn, turns the axle. Um, and then we use the indicator to unscrew and get the axle closer and closer to the sanding drums. This is hard at first, but it'll it'll get easier over time as you use it. You can get it pretty close before you fire up the machine. Just don't have it touching when you start the machine. Uh, and then continue to unscrew the indicator until you hear the tire start to bite into the machine. And then back it off a little bit and go little by little. And you're on your way. I'll do a whole separate video on how to actually use the machine. Um, but this should have you good to go. If you have any questions, absolutely uh, post a comment in whatever whatever forum or media you're watching this video on, uh, or send me an email directly. My email is ggaub at ggaub.com. That's ggaub at ggaub.com, and I'll answer as soon as I can. Have a good one.